Now, when it comes to the Scream franchise, you never really know what to expect to be behind the mask. It can always be anybody. And in this next installment, I think that the reveal is going to be much, you know, more shocking than the previous installment. Just for the simple fact that it's the sequel and I think Radio Silence really wants to deliver with this film. From what I've seen in the previews and in the some of the photos, the killer will be basically paying homage to previous killers. And I feel like someone that a lot of people are expecting to see is still being behind the mask. Which is something that, you know, will surprise a lot of people, but I feel like that's a little bit too predictable at this point. I feel like nobody will be surprised if they choose to go that route, but I do believe that they're going to, you know, pick on someone else. Someone that we're not even expecting at all, and that person is Kirby. Let me explain. If you remember correctly, if you guys go back, you know, to Screen 4 and you check out a lot of her scenes out, you can clearly tell that she knows, you know, the horror genre. She knows the rules of the horror genre. She basically knows how horror movies work at the end of the day. And if you remember correctly, she was the only one who had, you know, that love interest with Charlie. And after the events of Screen 4, I know that she went on to live her own life. She got a lot of, you know, she had a lot of news outlets talking about her. And she basically gained the fame that jill basically wants it and i feel like now that there's a new group of people who are attracting more attention towards that case and considering the fact that it's someone related to billy loomis i feel like the attention that she was getting once on the news on social media and online is no longer going to be as strong as it once did and now that you know sam and tara have been you know the recent victims of the Woodsboro attacks and I feel like this is going to be her entire motive when it comes to the entire case. We don't really know what to expect from her from a character like that. One major clue that lets us know that she doesn't care about her story being glorified in horror movies is the fact that she's not giving an interview to a news channel. She's actually giving an interview to a horror movie channel that glorifies the horror genre. Pay some thought to that. She has no problem with promoting her life through the horror genre and living through the horror genre that's very suspicious to me from her perspective for the last 10 years she's been getting all of you know the press interviews and now she's seeing this new group of people sort of taking that away from her she's basically been getting known a lot just based on the events that happened 10 years ago and and i feel like that's gonna start disappearing now that you know the attention is now on sam and tara and I feel like if anybody were to create a sequel based on the previous installment and know how to do it correctly, it would be none other than Kirby. I mean, one of the main things, if you pay very close attention to that teaser trailer, there's a major clue in there. And I feel like it's the very last shot. It's Ghostface versus Mindy. Then I feel like since Kirby is just like Mindy in a lot of ways, I feel like they're hinting towards the fact that this is a movie centered around Kirby versus, you know, People who actually know about these movies and basically trying to get rid of anybody who's going to get in the way of her plan, of her master plan. I mean, I find it really suspicious how she came out of the blue and all of a sudden wants to help, but she was nowhere to be found. When it came to the previous installment, when all the attacks were happening back in Woodsboro, she could have easily popped back up when, you know, the attacks were happening in the final act, just like Sydney did to help out, but she didn't really care to. And I'm pretty sure that she was aware that the sheriff was murdered. I mean, like all these problems happening in the town that she was from, I don't really think it's a coincidence. And as far as the rumor going around that, you know, the opening scene is going to be about her getting attacked, I feel like that could be staged completely if the movie does open like that and she's the only one who i feel will be smart enough to pull something off like that she knows the movies go back and watch and screen for her study her character she knows how horror movies work at the end of the day and i feel like she's gonna be the smartest character out of all of them i find it really suspicious how these you know recent photos that have been released are paying homage to the previous killers who would actually know about these previous killers when you really pay some thought to it these new kids they're not really fans of you know the star franchise they're fans of the elevated horror just you know like tara was i told you i don't know these movies i don't ask me about something i do know ask me about it follows ask me about hereditary ask me about the witch I don't feel like they know about the stab movies as much as someone like Kirby, you know, knows about the stab movies. And I feel like she's the one behind all of this. She's the one who knows the killers, the wardrobe that they wore, 
and I feel like she's gonna know the angle to attack them from. Again, she likes the classic movies. She had a whole scene where she mentioned a lot of the classics. Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror, uh, Last House on the Left, Friday the 13th, and A Nightmare on Elm Street, My Bloody Valentine. Where does one of these classics take place? In Manhattan. Where does this new screen film take place? In Manhattan. I wonder who was inspired by that. I mean, think about it. It makes perfect sense for Kirby to be behind all of this when you really pay some thought to it. None of these new kids are going to be able to pull that off. They don't really know horror like that, the horror genre, the classic horror genre like that, for them to take it this far. One major clue of Kirby being the killer is actually in the new poster that was recently just released. And the only person's name on this poster who is closed is none other than Kirby's. And usually when something is closed, that means that a secret is being kept away. Something that we don't even know about. Something that we are not exposed to yet. And I feel like it's all gonna lead to this. It makes perfect sense as to why her name looks like this on the poster. One very interesting thing about this poster is that it only has the characters who have died in previous movies. But if you look very closely, this whole outline in the poster ends with Sam Carpenter's character and she is still alive as far as we're concerned. But this could be an indicator that the killer from this movie is directly going after her. Which indicates the fact that the killer is trying to outshine Sam Carpenter and be known and be recognized for being the person who killed the daughter of Billy Loomis, which is something that Kirby would go for if she is the one behind the mask. You also have to think of the fact that she's been making money from this fame that she gained. And now I feel that with her story being overshadowed by Sam and Tara, she finds herself in the same place that Gail was at the start of Screen 4, where she's not really making as much money as she used to, which is probably why she's going after her so she doesn't steal any of the shine from her story. And I feel like that right there is gonna be the thing that pushes her to the edge to commit all of these murders when you really think about it. Now, one major clue that's also in this new trailer is actually when they go to the sort of, you know, layer, the secret layer that Ghostface has, the secret, you know, shrine. There's a shot of Kirby right next to Ghostface. That's a huge hint right there by itself. Like it doesn't get any more obvious than this. The, there's a major clue right there. Why would you know the killer have a picture of Kirby right next to Ghostface? And notice how Ghostface is actually going after Gail, you know, really wanting to, you know, finish her off. Remember the person that Charlie didn't get to kill in Screen 4, his last victim, his last solo victim? That person was Gail. It makes perfect sense. This could be Kirby just trying to finish what Charlie couldn't finish. So she could once again gain that same fame that she once had. And so that her story and Charlie's story and what she went through can be more relevant. Now, one other major clue is actually in the shot when Sam is holding the gun. There's been new photos released of Kirby that show that she has a badge and a gun that's pretty much identical to this gun that Sam is holding. I mean, come on guys, it doesn't get any more clear than this. She's clearly behind this. Sam is telling her, you want me. You want me. Which again, brings us back to that whole theme about Kirby wanting to take back what's hers. This is a clear indication that the killer actually wants Sam, no one other than her. They want to take what she has, her place. And who would want that more than Kirby at this point? For somebody to have access to all of these, you know, previous costumes worn by the killer in previous films, somebody on a detective type of level would need to have access to them. There's rumors that she's, you know, either a detective or involved with the FBI in this film, and only someone that's involved in that field is going to be able to get those, you know, previous costumes worn by the killers. This all perfectly lines up with that photo that we saw. It makes perfect sense, like I said, as to why she would be behind all of this at this point. I personally feel like this is the only way that the film is going to have a major, you know, plot twist. 
and actually be more shocking than the previous installment. I mean, the previous installment was really good, but I literally predicted the killers two months before the film was out, and, and just based on their previous performances and other, you know, projects, I could pretty much already tell that they were going to be the killers. But in this film, it's not really the same case, and I feel like Radio Silence is going to take all the chances that they can get to actually surprise the fans and actually shock them when it comes to the final act. They could actually, you know, put Stu in there, but at this point, it's not going to be a surprising thing anymore. They could have pulled that off in the previous installment, and they didn't. I feel like if Stu is back, and there's somehow a cult that is helping him out, I feel like Kirby would be the leader of the cult. And again, what is the entire purpose of this? I feel like the entire purpose of her doing this is to top what Tara and Sam went through back in Woodsboro so she could once again gain that same fame that she once had and that is disappearing at the moment. Think about it, we'll never see this coming, we'll never see this coming from Kirby. We're used to seeing her be this good character, but just imagine the trauma that she went through after, you know, the events from the previous film. She was literally stabbed by someone that she was falling for. She was literally falling for the killer. She was best friends with the other killer. I don't think that she had a healthy lifestyle after the events of Screen 4, like you're actually thinking. I feel like her character went through a lot after the events of the fourth installment. And when you look at the title itself, the title itself is really reminiscent of the way the title of Screen 4 was. The number is sort of, you know, like an integral piece of, you know, the entire text just like Screen 4 was, which could again be another hint towards the fact that someone from that movie is actually going to be behind everything that happens in this film. The producers are clearly aiming for a different type of ghost face in this film, a smarter one, one that knows how to move more intelligently. And that's what the headline is for this film. It's a ghost face unlike any other ghost face that you've ever seen. Ghost face said it himself in the trailer. There's never been one like me. But there's never been one like me, Gail. Kirby is the only character who has been able to outsmart Ghostface. And one of the reasons why she was able to outsmart the killer is because she actually knew more about the movies than the actual killers. And it's obvious that she knows more about the horror classics. This makes perfect sense, guys. Think about it. And we've never seen something like this, especially in the screen franchise, being pulled off when a character from the past that we've already seen comes back and we expect them to be, you know, these people who help out, but they turn out being the killers. That's something that's never been done in this franchise, and I'm really excited to see the direction that they take this time. The only thing that would be more shocking than Kirby being the killer at this point it's Parker Posey's Gail returning from the events of Scream 3, going after Gail because she feels like she's the only Gail that should be alive. And if you remember correctly, if you go back, she was kind of psychotic at the same time. Hey! <laughs> My lawyer liked that. That slab might be her entire motivation to go after her. I feel like it's going to be really fun to see what happens, how it plays out, and what the characters do. I heard there's more chase scenes in this film. One of the things I really didn't like about Screen 5 is that there wasn't really any chase scenes in there. And I'm excited to see how they, you know, pull it off this time around. I'm really excited for that. But let me know your theories down in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.